Kia ora koutou. This video is for students from Wellington schools who are coming to my Saturday sessions, but it's also for people in 13 NCA with me this year and anyone doing scholarship calc at Dubsey who needs a bit of a brush up on their basic complex numbers skills. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Jamie Sneddon at the start of this. He's got a fantastic website called Sned Maths that lots of you probably know, and he's letting me use his kind of fake level three papers, and he said that I can video them when we're done. So that's just fantastic. If you go to that website, you'll find quite a few papers for all three standards, but I suggest that you leave them until you're getting set them as tests. Just don't go using them all up too early in the year. So I've done two for us so far from complex numbers, and I'll definitely be using the other ones later on when we get to differentiation and integration. Anyway, in this question, I'm going to go through the first three parts of question one. The first two questions are achieve questions, and the third one's a little merit question. And um, all of them are fine, as long as you read the question carefully. So question 1a, we've got a third expression. I'm going to go reasonably slowly with this because I know some of you just won't have seen thirds that much. But thirds are cool and you'll quickly get the hang of how they work. I'm going to write this out in full. So 3 plus 11 squared is 3 plus 11 times 3 plus 11. And now we expand it as if it's an ordinary quadratic. But a couple of cool things are going to happen. So we get 9 plus 3 root 11 plus 3 root 11. And then when we multiply these two, we just get plus 11. That gives me 20 plus 6 root 11. Now, you don't have to write all of that working out in this case. Um, if you're confident, I'd be happy with you going to, I guess, to that line. Although I would always, after, I don't know, 30-something years of doing these questions, um, I would always write that out. Because it's very, very easy to muck up expansions, and so um, you slow down to speed up. So that's your final answer there. And I don't think you had to, but you could just say that P was 20 and Q was equal to 6, because that's the form you've been asked for. Now, the next question is one where, when I gave this question in a test, I had about half the class did a whole pile of extra work. And it's a very, very easy question. We are told that we've got a quadratic, x squared plus bx plus 13 is equal to 0. We know that b is a real number. Because b is a real number, the conjugate root theorem is going to hold. So be real, so the conjugate root theorem tells us that the roots of that equation will occur in conjugate pairs. So b is real, so the conjugate root theorem says that x equals 2 minus 3i is another, or the other, solution. Okay, so you don't need to do any more work than that. You don't need to find out what b is but we could find out what b is but that's the end right so tick achieved um, while i'm here though i am going to show you how to how to figure out what that expanded quadratic looks like so we will get b just because we've got half of a really good question so my first root is 2 plus 3i remember you don't need to do this for the question and my second one is 2 minus 3i the key here is to rearrange, well not to rearrange, but to re-bracket these so that you're grouping the real bit here and the imaginary bit here. So we get x minus 2 like that. And that's a really useful thing to do for lots of places in complex numbers. So what I have now is I have a difference of two squares pattern. I've got this squared and then I've got this squared. Now I'm not going to expand all of that because I figure if you're watching this you know what the difference of two squares is. Um, if you don't, go find one of my um, year 12 videos where I do some harder difference of two squares patterns. And we get that, and again I would always write that term out as minus 9 squared, 9i squared. And then expanding that I get x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 9 is equal to 0. x squared minus 4x plus 13 is equal to 0. So if we'd been asked what b was, b is equal to negative 4. Remember, the question didn't ask us what b was. That was just an extra bit. The same thing kind of goes for the next one. Um, in the Saturday sessions, we've spent, I think twice it's come up now, that the sum and product of the roots information is very, very useful. And in here, you're given that information directly. So find a quadratic with roots that add to 3 plus i and multiply to 3i. So if the roots are alpha and beta, we know that in a quadratic, alpha and beta is equal to negative b over a, 
and alpha times beta is equal to c over a. We have to just write the quadratic, right? Well, we have to write a quadratic. There are an infinite number. But the easiest one to do here is to say that we know that the roots are equal to uh, 3 plus i. So 3 plus i is equal to negative b over a, and 3i is equal to c over a. That's a mistake there, sorry. That should be c over a. We're going to let a equal 1 so that my quadratic isn't x squared quadratic. And that means that negative b is equal to 3 plus i, and c is equal to 3i. So we're done. B, we're just about done. b can be this, c can be this. My quadratic will be x squared minus 3 plus i x um, plus 3i is equal to 0. So there you go. Now that's with a merit credit because you have to understand the sum and product to do that. I saw heaps of really great students in my class go ahead and try and do a whole lot of stuff with the quadratic formula. Um, what else did I see? Well, that was that was kind of the main thing. Um, I saw them try and split them up. If you look at the question, if the roots add to 3 plus i and they multiply to 3i, then the roots could be 3 and i, right? So it's that easy. And then if you see that, it's just x minus 3, x minus i, and you get what we got. Um, but I'm doing it the sum and products way because I think that getting really confident with what that gives us is a really, really useful thing to have in your scholarship calc or level three calc toolbox. Okay, um, I'm going to keep this video short. I'm going to stop here. In the next video, I'm going to do, where's it gone? This one, the third one, and hopefully also this excellence question, which is a locus question. So I'll be back probably later on today. Um, if you're watching these before the Saturday session, that's fine because I think there's heaps more questions to be going on with that I won't get to.